Hi everybody, tis I, the Molly Archer with Archer Astrology. I am at a top secret undisclosed location in Area 99 doing some checkouts. They have found another alien who, during Mercury Retrograde, wanted to find out if, they, if the other alien was coming back for him or not. And they were playing country music records backwards, which was cool, because then the dog came home, the car got fixed, and, and the girl came back too. It was really kind of cool. So um, he wanted a tarot reading. So here we are. All right. Um, how you doing? Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Um, if you could return the love for me, love like down here, share the channel in the video. I'm going to go over and get Instagram, okay? The alien's over at Instagram. Don't tell. Okay? Hang tight. We'll find out who it is. Let's see. Okay. Hi, Instagram. Tis I. Well, we already talked about this. I'm in a top secret location in Area 99 right now, working with an alien who wanted to find out if somebody's coming back for him or not. So. Um, it's been an interesting time. <laughs> if you could all return the love for me, please. Love to like, share the channel and the video. Please subscribe and help the channel to grow. I would totally appreciate you. We're using our inside voices. This is the Indiana voices. Okay? We are going to do a love reading check-in for you and the one on your mind for the middle or so-ish of April 2024-ish. Or whenever you clicked on this reading and decided to hang out with me for a little bit. Eight of Wands, thanks for coming. So there's communication. You're thinking about the Wheel of Fortune. You're already, it's like already on your mind. You're like ready to go on this one, right? Feel pretty good and confident, though. If you got the Eight of Wands, you're ready to talk. You know the wheel's spinning in your favor. I like that. All right, so we're going to check out and see what's going on for you. Um, feel free, if you haven't already, head over and check out the most recent All Signs. I'll post the stuff down below afterwards and in the little picture cards at the end because the April contest is on. There are four chances to win at the upcoming All Signs, Thursday, April 18th at 7.30 p.m. I go live every Thursday night at 7.30 for an All Signs from Aries to Pisces. All right, and this Thursday night is the awesome collab with me and Sagittarius Solterra. All right, so you're gonna have a Cancer and a Sagittarius on the screen. This will be an awesome night to remember. We're gonna have a good time. So please set the bell to all notifications and we will see you there. Hi, Cappy Go, good morning. What's up, Cappy? All right, also pages towards all over. I go live Tuesday nights at 7.30 p.m. for the pick a card readings for my decks. Pick you, see how that works out. And um, yeah, feel free to page your swords. Hi, Michelle, Michelle Mabel. I love that Beatles song, actually. I love when you come in here because I always think of that. Good to see you. All right, I've got some healing music base covers with three new base covers coming. I've also got uh, more of the pick card readings, lives and videos. So everything is neatly prioritized and organized for your viewing enjoyment. We're gonna have Three new bass covers. I got a song from John Lennon, a little garage band out of Liverpool called The Beatles, and one of them, and Petty. So hang out, stay tuned, take a few minutes to just enjoy yourselves. All right, Gemini, you ready? I think we got everything covered. If you want a personal reading, private reading, you can email me at archerastrology at gmail.com. I'm booked up in the next week, but we will definitely get you scheduled. All right, I had to stop and do the reading for the alien here at Area 99, so we're cool. All right, alien just wanted to know what was going on. So let's go for it. Maybe the alien's Gemini. That'd be cool. I love Geminis. I'd talk to a Gemini all night. Chariots. You're like, let's go, Archer. So you do have something where you know the wheel's turning in your favor and you're ready to move forward. Could be Cancerian energy. With the Emperor, you're bossing up. And you are looking good. Standing in a podium, maybe you're a public speaker or like in the media or something. Whatever it is, you like value your appearance, your soul, and everything. And you are, you're on point. I can actually feel it already. So let's go for it. We're going to do base cards with the Grand Theft Auto, my awesome Urban Tarot deck, which I love. And then because it is April 14th, we are going to use the Titanic Tarot for your clarifiers, because this is the night in Titanic history where the iceberg jumped out in front of it and had a little fender bender. Okay, couldn't get Mako though. So it was about just, it was right between 11 and 12, 11.40 p.m that it came over the horizon and it sideswiped the right side of the ship and it didn't rip a big hole in it, but it ruptured the plates. The pressure of the bigger iceberg, the iceberg was bigger than the Titanic, it, it pushed into it, it popped the rivets and caused the, the actual total size of the damage that sank the ship was about the size of your front door. That's literally at about 12 square feet, but because it was stretched out over 300 feet of the 800 foot ship, it was enough to rupture too many compartments. So. That's your Titanic fact for today, because we're in the Titanic timeline. So, let's go for it. For Gemini and the one on their mind, your thoughts, feelings, and emotions, let's see what's going on. Interesting how tax day lines up with the sinking of the Titanic, isn't it? <laughs> All right, here we go. Gemini, what do we have for Gemini and the one on their minds? 
all the highest and the greatest good. I don't need to say it anymore because you know when you're with me, Jam, you are ultimately protected. I am your ride or die for life. I'm your crystals. I got you covered. I love you. All right, let's do it. Gemini. What do we have for Gemini? Inside voices. <laughs> Two shuffles. We're ready. Oh, you're making me giggle, Gemini. Cute. You're cute. Okay. Here we go. Two shuffles. One. And two. Let's love. Oh, there we go. Love this deck for the pretty fly, Gemini's. Everybody says you're pretty fly for an air sign. Here we go. The bottom of the deck is the Ace of Pentacles. There is a new beginning starting for you here. This is that start. I love these pinnacles. It's right in that first track of gold record to go forward. Oh my goodness, Gemini, do you see this? To the Ten of Pentacles, to the Emperor, and that came out in the pre-jumps as we were getting going on this too. So this here is leveling up. Your gifts are strengthening. Look at that wreath over the Emperor's head here, as I was mentioning about being on point and in place. You are literally going from the Ace of Pentacles to the Ten of Pentacles very fast. Maybe you've got some strong cardinal sign placements, either Libra, Cancer, uh, Capricorn or Aries, the Emperor, that's allowing you to ride this energetical shift into a whole new energy. This is going to be neat. Let's go for it. All right. What's your present energy? Where are you at right now? The Knight of Pentacles. Gordon Ramsay making a perfect filet mignon, right? It's kind of like a complete energetical shift. Hi, Fabulous. Thanks for coming. It's like a complete energetical shift that things have been taking a while to get to go and fruition point. And so you felt like you've given your all to everything. You've waited. You've been patient. Capricorn, Taurus energy on this. And you've analyzed and processed everything that you can to this here. And feeling like you're, you're not getting to that Ace of Pentacles because it's still off in the distance. But it's in your outcome, so it's coming faster than you think. All right, the incoming energy is around you. What you're feeling in that is the Two of Swords. Having a little blind faith to follow the process. Kind of like an eyes closed, just trusting in it. And Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus got a big wheel collection. It's cool. But you're looking for peace. It's right at the bottom of the card here. So it's when you've got those two swords blocking your path that you trust in the process and your divine timing, okay? That it's like, no matter how many people stop and try to get you down, you're like, you know what you're doing. Maybe you're into more like, like chakras and healing and crystals, like just crystals like crazy. I've seen a Gemini ordering crystals online and rocks and just being like, I need all of this, right? So you know something's coming in because you've done all this work to level up and work through it, right? And whenever somebody comes at you and is like, oh, Gemini, you, you can't do that. I'm not sure. And this, you're like, I know what I'm doing. And you've got this plan following your divine time. Now, your goal or destiny is the three of cups. This is what you're here for. Cancer energy. And that happiness that comes in from above. It's the destiny to head towards your four of cups and to overcome those feelings. So maybe even something to do with an Aries or a birthday season that's going on. Or you're already making plans on something for your birthday. All right? That shows some happiness that you've dreamt about, okay? And I do see you're going for that brass ring, the gold ring here that's on that hand right there. So maybe it's thinking about something even like a promise that, that, that you made to yourself, something that you wanted to accomplish. And no matter what, you want that Ace of Pentacles. You want that fresh, clean start that takes you all the way to your 10-year plan. You might even have a whole 10-year plan in place with vision boards that you don't let anybody stop you. You know your words mean something to this here, and you speak always from a place of positivity. You don't let anybody get you down no matter how hard they try. You could be born on the 23rd or your life path number two or three. Now, what's cooking on their side of the fence? Four of Swords. They are up in their fields here. So, like here, maybe they were maybe they were actually a runner when you met them. Mm -hmm. That they get in their heads just a little bit too much or they like wake up in the middle of the night, like a night owl or constantly dreaming. They're always like, somehow you're always on their mind, okay? They could actually... If you've recently had a dream about the one you're thinking about, guess what? They've had it about four times that, all right? And that four of swords is something that cuts right to the quick. It's that deep emotions that they still feel for you on this, okay? So even if they've stayed quiet, they keep thinking about what you said. So if you're in that emperor energy, there's something you said to them that kind of, we'll call it, put them in their place, but made them think a little bit. It's not bad energy out of that. We've even got natural progression with the one, two, three, four, all right? Now, current energy coming in on this one is the eight of pentacles. Virgo energy, doing some intricate work. So see, you took them to school. You got them working on their healing. They're like MacGyver down here, scotch tape and bailing wires to do that fine work. And some people might look at it as an imposter syndrome. Maybe they do similar things to you or they look similar or, or emulate certain things. But I see it as a form of inspiration. Maybe they are into, into chakra and reiki. That's how you guys even connected and hooked up. But it's that ability that you inspire them because you're way too 
put things into a positive perspective regardless of the situation. So you trigger that work and they do see that you work well together on this too. It's kind of like the Beatles song yesterday, the most covered song of all time. People didn't just cover it and copy it. They had inspirations to go forward with it from there. So you've inspired them to change their ways. The last time you guys spoke, it might have been a little four of swords hot and heated, but you made them stop and think, which is probably why they're quiet. Maybe you're not even sure how to approach right now, okay? You took your power. I'm proud of you for it. I love that. That's why, that's why Gemini's look that good, you know? You can't argue that, right? Gemini knows. Okay, so let's take your three cards, add their two cards to it, get a potential outcome for y'all. It's the Ten of Swords. I told you, it's your energy. See there? And that point of completion. The Ten of Swords in your back to go forward and overcome these, not forgetting it, those silence moments, the Nine of Swords moments, that you've made it through this, and you've helped them more than you know. Even if you're, even if they tire you out, and you're like, well, I've tried so many times, and it keeps coming back to the same point. The Ten of Swords shows that you guys make it to that completion, where you, you heal, you put the words behind you, but you don't forget about it, but you learn from it, so they know how to react to you, how and, and how you react to them. It's being able to communicate on an even level without so much emotions. You're an air sign. You're the mutable air sign. Air signs are the first ones to go, look, swords don't hurt anybody if they're, on, if they're just laying here on the table. You know, it takes somebody to do it and two to make the argument and two to make up. All right. Well, the water signs, the earth signs, and the fire signs are like, ooh, swords, scary, shiny things. You're like, it's a sword, you know. So you keep a perspective here that lets you rise into a whole new powerful energy. Maybe you're in the, in the verge of a promotion or starting your own business or something that you got a business plan that you're like, it might work. Hey, Jojo, good morning. Then it's just like, whoa something changes big time for you here. So you can plan that brings everything back together. So um, you're the manifester. I see the one on your mind is the manifestee. So they might be in a little bit of a rough time right now being like, why does everything keep changing? What's going on? It's because you're powerful. You could be a manifesting generator if you've done the, um, it's online. It's that long LMNOP Batman symbol elephant, baby elephant walk test. You know, it takes a while, Knight of Pentacles, but then you find out something about this. You're a powerful energy. All right, let's take a look at what the outcome is going forward under this one here. The High Priestess, Shh, I can say no more. I think we've already given enough away. But no, this is that shift, because right now we're in the, we're in the, like the eye of a storm. Maybe you're a storm chaser, or want a storm chase. That is on my bucket list. I want to chase a storm. I think that'd be so cool. But it's that, it's that ability in, in the middle, where when you get through the first part of the storm and then the eye of the hurricane and the storm, it's peaceful, it's calm, it's quiet. Maybe like, like a Gemini that you're, like your parents, or your grandparents even told you, hey, when you got that point in the storm where everything's quiet, and, the, screen, and the, the sky goes green. That's that moment if you hear a freight train that the tornado is approaching. So you're in a place this week with no planetary activity as we approach the sun going into Taurus and the birth of a new star. There is a nova happening in the sky that's helping you give birth to all these new things, the ideas that you're having and wanting to manifest that have been happening for a while, okay? Your them could be born on the 10th, also the 8th or the 4th. I'm seeing the 13th and the 18th also comes out this along with the 10th. Did I mention that already? So it could be the 20th with two 10s, all right? That high priestess shows something manifesting. If you look up in the sky, there will be a new star being born. It's, it's located right between, you gotta draw a line from the handle on the Little Dipper down to Libra, okay? And then use a Z axis off of Ophicus, basically Sagittarius, it's fine. And that's where you can see this. Around the 20th to the 21st, it'll appear similar to the Devil Horn Comet that happened during the eclipse, a bluish greenish glow in the sky. That's actually a nova that's starting, okay? And that's helping give birth to it. With you as an air sign, you'll feel the impact. Maybe you've noticed your head tingling, your hair getting fun. I see a Gemini that just kind of likes playing with their hair, or maybe you're into that, okay? But this is giving birth to something. Maybe you want to start your own business doing hair nails and stuff. And whatever your dreams are, you follow your arrow wherever it points. And that's your destiny. It keeps you in that positive energy. All right. So the emotions that you guys will be feeling are the page of wands. Hold on. Whoa. I got to draw a Sharpie suit on this thing. But look at the passion you've got to go forward. Maybe you're in the dance and you, and you teach others. We're working on this together. You guys come in together as a power couple on this that allows you to find that harmony to speak each other's words. Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. And understand that your words matter. Those swords cut. And so it's being heard and understood, not just like, Oh my gosh, can I tell you how I'm feeling? Uh-huh, fine. It becomes more of a, can I tell you how I'm feeling? Well, yeah, absolutely. And then I'll tell you how it makes me feel. And we can overcome it instead of just like ah, 10 swords and all over the place, you know? It's nice energy. And it's that passion that you guys get together to make it happen too, okay? That's how you'll be feeling that gets you to this Ace of Pentacles go point, which is coming really quick. Capricorn energy, get that bad, you know? That was, a, that was, that was, 
That might have been a government vehicle. Go with the government. It's the Ace of Wands. <clears throat> Not safe for YouTube in any way. But to put a more family-friendly spin on it, it's that passion to get this going. That no matter what gets you guys down, you have this ability to work forward and ignite that passion to keep the pentacle energy rolling, okay? Nice union on this. You've got some strong fire. Aries is here. And I mentioned the cardinal energy, that you're riding the positive shift on the Wheel of Fortune. Aries, Cancer's here, Capricorn. Then you got Virgo showing up. We're just missing a little Libra. It's right here with the Two of Swords. Could be dealing with a Libra, possibly a Cancer. Also, Aries is hanging out. Virgo, Sagittarius, or another Gemini. Ooh, two twins. That's, oh my gosh, that would be awesome. Okay. <clears throat> Give me some clarifiers. Let's go forward on this. Starting off with the Titanic deck and looking at that Knight of Pentacles, because Knight of Pentacles is the slowest moving energy in the deck. Everybody would be like, oh, it should be named Elmer's already. But I don't see it that way. The Knight of Pentacles is the U.S. Postal Service in Archer's decks because neither rain nor sleet nor snow nor storm. The Knight of Pentacles always gets that pentacle to its appointed destination, okay? The Queen of Cups comes right out. That's the love you've been looking for. You, you felt like you gave it all to them, and you've, you've seen them at their worst, at their best, and you never gave up. Queen of Cups, Cancer Energy. You have that ability to, to heal, to, to understand. You see deeper than anybody else is an air sign, where you can see beyond that the words and what cuts. You gave your all to this. Eight of Swords to the Moon. You might have a Gemini Moon. Maybe I've got somebody watching all their placements here. But that Gemini Moon showing up with the Eight of Swords. There's the Gemini and the Pisces energy. You're getting deep. Two mutable energies here to follow that. And this is literally like when Titanic left port. And th there were a few workers in Ireland that said, hey, don't look at us. It was all right when it left here. There was an Irish saying that went around just after the sinking that they were like, built by the Irish, sunk by the Scottish. That was, that was rude, but William Murdoch was Scotsman. So something about overseas or Ireland, wanting to travel and see the hills of Ireland might even resonate to you. Did you have dreams that you want to you go worldwide? Mr. Pitbull, Dolly, you know, worldwide. The Eight of Swords, though, shows that they got you up into your fields at that point where you were like, Archer, I, I don't know what to do. It just, they, they, they don't learn. There could be an age difference or something like a little bit up there between you guys. But that Eight of Swords, you as a Gemini, that's your energy, has that ability to overcome it. I have the blueprints for the Titanic. I actually have the blueprints for all three of the things. There were three ships. Eight of Swords. These weren't these wrought iron steel gates that Jack and Fabrizio had to rip a bench up to bust down. Interesting that they had plywood in 1912, but I, I, it's, it's okay. Anyways, these were actually these beautifully hand-carved Three of Pentacles style saloon doors that just pivoted. The big gates were down in the cargo hold. So even down in the ship like that, you have the ability to transmute this energy and overcome it and not let it stop you. Positive manifestations out of that, okay? That moon card shows that you know more. And with that full moon approaching in Scorpio, after we've gone into Taurus season, it grounds out and allows you to go really deep. Scorpio energy, okay? Page of Wands. Oh my gosh, I mentioned Murdoch, and here he is. That's William Murdoch. His words mattered. Aries energy, along with the King of Swords. That there is major, I think that's major, but Archibald Butt, he was the he was the aide to the president at the time. He was a high up military commander with the government that knew the weight of the words mattered. So they hurt you, they cut deep, but you don't let it stop you. You are able to just stay in your power, stay in a positive manifestation all the time, working with the law of resonation, where you, you resonate what you give out. It's like saying to God, I am so grateful that I, I'm abundant. I'm so grateful of how confident I am. And God always looks, when you don't go all Abraham Hicks, about like, this is what I want. God will be like, oh yeah, keep going. But when you're like, thank you, thank you, grateful. You, get, you like it, you love it, you get some more of it. Your words matter. Maybe you're heavy into words, writing, books, novels, starting like your own self-publishing, like get into Amazon and Kindle. I've got one of those companies, it's beautiful. I've wrote a few things on Titanic in it. So it's the ability to, to spread out and create an entire umbrella company and have love, all right? Someone has a bracelet too that you wear. It's like your lucky bracelet that when you get nervous, and, and somebody's really starting to get to you, you do like the twirl thing with it. Similar to like what people do with the ring, you know, and it's, it's your ability to like keep yourself in, in check while they're like going all, you know, the party girl's fun until they puke on your shoes, right? And you've got this ability to find that justice and to know what's coming. Maybe you've noticed some more smells or something even lately, like, like you notice grandma's baking and cooking because this Libra energy here, this is third passenger. I think her name was Miriam, Miriam Buchanan. 
I'll double check the files. I have files on all 2,200 passengers. But she was on board with a few of her children. She's depicted in the end of the movie during the sinking scene where she says about the land of terror the knock. And she's putting the kids to bed. She knew the iceberg was coming because many of the people reported being able to smell ice. So you felt this change coming and you felt something approaching over time where you're stepping into your power as mutable energy. You're adapting. While everybody else is sitting here going, oh no, Mercury retrograde. Your dominant planet's Mercury. When they're like, okay, don't make any choices. Don't make any business decisions. Don't do anything. You're like, what? No way. You're like an investment, like the Genworth company fund, where you're diamond handsing this thing and being like, we're going for this. We're buying the dip. Buy low, sell high before the storm hits, okay? So you definitely got like, you're feeling the heat and the pressure, but you're not letting it overcome you. You're amazing. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm, I'm totally digging you. I'm totally into you right now. <laughs> the, I, this is why I love tarot. The magician comes in, told you, you are manifesting this. Gemini Virgo energy. Embracing the retrograde while everybody else is all, you know, kind of, whoa, going crazy on it. You're like, it's my dominant planet. I know what's up. I love that about you too. You're in heavy manifestation. Maybe you're actually into tarot. Maybe you're getting into the esoteric a little bit and seeking that different knowledge and noticing things strengthening. Like you have this ability to make people ask questions for you, right? Like somebody in front of you in line and you're like, I wonder what's up. I wonder if, I wonder if there's, I wonder if there's coffee shop around here. And the person in front of you in line all of a sudden, is there a coffee shop nearby? Go to, and you're like, whoa, it's really deep. Okay. Your gifts are strengthening on this right now. And you've got their attention big time. Okay. No matter how much you try to hold it back from it, they've got their sights locked on you. Okay. I just heard George Harrison. I got my mind set on you. This song is just six words long, but you make it work. <laughs> All right. You're, and your father, your father's still your guiding, isn't he? And I'm not saying that it's a dad that's like transitioned. If so, my condolences, but we'll leave that there. But like, even if your dad's still here, it's the one that you can go, dad, I've had a time. And then dad's like, well, why don't you just get some raisin bran? And you're like, what? You know, but it's those things that like, you know, take this banana just in case. Well, when the time comes, you'll know, you know? And so you've got like that parental figure or a father figure that you trust, that you look to, to find your justice. All right, I've got some magician energy. So you got Virgo, you've got Aquarius here. You've also got Pisces, Cancer big time, along with another Gemini. And you could be born possibly, I'm seeing the seventh comes out, the first, the 17th, as well as the 27th on this, okay? Also the 30th which I find that interesting. Oh, I digress. We'll deal with that later. <laughs> All right. Now let's see what's going on. On the other side of the energetical fence. Here we go. Give me everything you've got, please. Thank you. On the four of swords, the eight of pentacles, and the ten of swords. I mean, dude, Gemini, Libra, how can they not be? They got 14 swords. The 14th might be a date that resonates between the two of you guys. August 14th with this eight, okay? Or you've looked into it. Maybe actually, maybe you've been up with somebody that goes a little deeper. Like, it's like how I, I, sure, I do, I do birth charts, right? But then I also, I do conception charts. What was the energy like when you really started? Think deep, think four cells deep, you know what I mean? Four swords. Look at how my deck stopped shuffling. The lover's cards, see, they're trying to be all nine of pentacles. Like, oh no, I'm fine. I don't care about Virgo, we cool. But underneath it, underneath it all is you. And it's also right by that three of swords. Told you they can't get you off their mind. And I mentioned that they they were a runner when you met, straight up, you know? And we're talking like a marathon, you know, right? But it's because a lot of stuff got to them. Let's see what it is. Nine of Cups, the repeating nine shows up to the Knight of Cups to the Page of Swords on the Hill of Fortune. The Six of Pentacles, they do want something to work out, but it's almost like like they, they feel like they've gone too far. And, and I'm at Area 99, and the Nine of Pentacles to the Nine of Cups shows up, along with the Knight of Cups. So there is something very unique about them because there was only one African-American family on the Titanic in third class that was traveling. So they were the most unique there. And they made it through now. Unfortunately, he did not. But he did everything he could to make sure the family survived, okay? And with that Nine of Cups, that's Pisces energy to stay mutable and go with the flow. And right now, everything is like an airport runway backed up. As we get into Taurus season, all the planets, all the dominant energy is going to be in Pisces, Aries, and Taurus. That's something that has, doesn't happen that often as we go back around on this, okay? So... Whatever it is, maybe they've stayed quiet because you really got them in their feels to think like, yeah, maybe I need to end this game and, and, and settle down. Something put them in check, right? Eight of Cups to the High Priest. Oh my gosh, we got the High Priestess squared. I can really not say no more. <laughs> when I get repeating cards showing up that connects, that's my, that's, that's, that's God telling me, keep going, Archer, you on point. Go, go, don't stop. But then think of that, don't stop. All right, Six of Pentacles to the Eight of Cups. 
you put them in place where they needed to walk away to something to come back in a proper perspective with you for this unique love that you've been manifesting with the Two of Pentacles to the Wheel of Fortune. This is overcoming that, I don't know, I'm not sure, what are we going to do? J. Bruce is made. Maybe they, they were always made the scapegoat in every situation. Everybody that came into their life before you, just use them for what they had. And then once they were down Ten of Swords style in the ditch, then somebody walked up and took their wallet too. All right, maybe maybe you had to, I'm seeing somebody had to hide their wallet at night at once upon a time. J. Bruce is made, every movie depicts him in the wrong way. Completely wrong way. It's just made up history written by the winners type of a thing. He did not dress as a girl to get in a lifeboat. He didn't cower and get in a lifeboat. That man, the Titanic and the White Star Line was his baby. His father founded the line. See, I mentioned something about somebody's father. <laughs> Luke, I am your father. That's the only one I know. Mandela effect. Luke, I am your father. Jojo, what's the other one? Luke, I am your father, or it goes Luke, I'm something else. Hi, Dex. But yeah, this Wheel of Fortune shows them adapting to the situation. J. Bruce Disney was told by Chief Officer Wild, the Page of Swords, to get into the boat because the rest of the people were already running towards the stern when they had the lifeboat ready to go. So him and another man got in because an officer of the ship told them to, and then the press grabbed hold of it and said, oh, there's your bad guy. I ran away, right? Everybody said he ran away from the boat. He didn't. That man lived out the rest of his life. You couldn't even say the word Titanic around him because he felt so bad for everything he did and the way the press vilified him. That man had a deep passion for that ship. It was his baby. There could be children involved between the two of you guys or one of those unusual situations where like they've had people in their life that don't let the exes go because like of the, of the children, the stepchildren. And you're like, well, but then that's confusing the children because then they've got the person with the new person and there's my two dads show up. So they've been through stuff like that and the Wheel of Fortune is clearing that energy so they can get their act together. But they're nervous. They're, they're nervous beyond belief with this Knight of Cups that like the Eight of Cups, maybe it's too little too late. And they're like, I don't think Gemini's cool with this. So in a way, kind of, you guys are almost out stubborning each other because neither of you guys want to make that move because you're nervous about it because you don't know where to go. Do they change? Do they change? It's the energy of people don't change, but they change back with that time to reflect, four of swords, to rejuvenate, to refresh themselves, recharge, like a hybrid rolling down the road, all right? Could be dealing with a Capricorn, also Taurus and Virgo are here. Um, Scorpio's hanging out as well, but that's the one that wanted to keep it high priestess on this. Strong Taurus energy, Sagittarius is here along with Cancer too, okay? Pisces, big time hanging out for this. Whoa, there's a lot of Pisces. But that's a lot of water. They're in their emotions. You got them in their feels because like, like I mean, if I'm already seeing how good you look, I mean, you're at a 10 right now. Mm, nice, Gemini. Mm. So somebody's got their favorite pair of boots out right now. I'm like, yep, I'm looking this today. But they're sitting there going, I don't know if I can compete with that. And you're going, well, I don't know if they even care about me anymore. Maybe they don't even think about me anymore. Taylor Swift style, Sagittarius energy. Captain Smith still has a death grip on that wheel at 10 and 2. So, no, you're, you're always on their mind. Um, the 20th showed up, too, with this 10 times 2 being 20. Also, the 8th, the 19th, and the 7th comes up, okay? All right, so let's go forward on this one here. Let's see what happens. This Ace of Wands shows that if it goes forward, once you pop, you just can't stop, all right? So, they never had anybody that actually took the time to check on them and see how they were doing. So, you changed them, and maybe they just didn't know how to react to it, all right? People don't go through those changes. They change back. All right. So give me everything we got on this High Priestess, again, if we can have anything, and the Page of Wands, the Ace of Wands, because look at this. That's, that's, that's fun. I just noticed she's wearing boots down there, too. How about that stuff? All right. The Tower. 2.17 a.m. Titanic time, which will happen tonight. We're on the same timeline. I'm going to actually watch a streamline tonight. There's Titanic, Honor, and Glory. They do a two-and-a-half-hour stream. It is actually a complete CGI what, of the sinking. That's, that's my excitement after I go out for a drink. <laughs> Maybe there's some liquid courage involved. Because, I mean, after a Long Island or two, I have text of the meaning of life to some people that mean the world to me. So, I mean, I can see that being something needed to get this, this thing to end. 2.17 a.m. was the moment that straw broke Titanic's back where the power went out, the generators failed, the boilers stopped, and, and it broke in half. It was that end point for this where you put an end to this cycle here and begin going forward. And that's the secret. You're manifesting a complete energetical shift and change, like that star being born and Mercury retrograde ending on the 25th. Okay. Three of Pentacles to Temperance. Told ya. Measuring twice, cutting once. You guys do a lot of work together with a little help from above, a little help from your friends come out, you know, and that allows that new balance to come in and to look more optimistic and to look forward for these new adventures. The new plans that you've been happening and putting together, they're still in place to go forward. Strong Sagittarius energy, that's top shelf. 
can't do what Sagittarius does, right? That's that ability to seek the adventure, to seek the knowledge of the ninth house and to learn from it straight up, three of pentacles. Look at these woodworkers. This is the guarantee group that were actually on board Titanic. Every piece of that thing was handcrafted. They didn't have lathes. They didn't have power tools. It was by hand. And every room was done complete like that. This is putting a lot of work in that you guys can learn to understand each other's languages and find that balance to alchemy, to blend, to create together. And, and not just be heard, but to actually be understood. Instead of like, like saying everything that's on your mind and just saying, oh, that's great. Um, well, yeah, cool. But actually being like, really? Well, let's talk about that because I didn't realize you felt that way, all right? And you come together for it and using your gifts, that ability to communicate that damage with the mouth here and keeping the sight set on you. So, I mean, you've, you've got this thing fired up. This is the passion that just goes boom and launches everything straight at its destination at its point, okay? And there's some not so safe for YouTube here, I'll tell you that part, but you guys do you. Okay, so you've got the public side and you've got the private side that shows up in this one here. And you have the ability to balance that out too. It's nice energy. With the King of Pentacles to the Ten of Cups, Pisces, Virgo energy. Check that out. John Jacob Astor, Jingle Henry Schmidt, that's my name too. So you guys do share something similar, but there's an age difference because he was the richest man on the Titanic. And he, he had a much younger wife, Madeline, okay? And there's always that thing about him and Ben Guggenheim and, and Isidore Strauss and the Federal Reserve, but I digress. It's always fun to wander down that well. Was it the Olympic that sank or the Titanic? It was the Titanic. But to come back to reality for those moments and to manifest your Ten of Cups that you've been dreaming of and straight up manifesting, bringing the 5D into the 3D, all right? It's like when I play Monopoly. I don't care about everything else. I just want to make sure I get Park Place and Boardwalk, and I'm good. <laughs> so yeah, your Ace of Wands, your Ten of Cups passion, this is the trifecta that hits there where they love you for your mind, for your soul, for your body, mm -hmm. Ace of Wands, but it all clicks where you guys just get it and heard to be understood. It's the one on your mind, all right? It's that, it's that bond that takes things to come together on a whole nother level and keeps the flame going. Fire and water that makes the steam, like the steam that propelled the Titanic about three quarters way across the ocean. <laughs> but I digress. All right, so yeah, very strong Pisces energy, Sagittarius as well. Um, Scorpio's hanging out. Could be any sign. Totally could be any sign. I can say no more. I can say no more. But yeah, this is deep and you're feeling it. You're manifesting it. Pay attention to your dreams because that is you actually, especially if you're dreaming in color now, then pay attention to that stuff because you're, you're making stuff happen. All right, strong moon energy. Pisces is big time. Cancer is big time. Sag Aries is here on the Capricorn. I'm also seeing Libra. And um, there you are, you got the Nine of Swords. Don't forget Leo with the Strength card, definitely. That strength to keep going forward on this. Wow, amazing. Uh, Gemini, thank you very much for being here. Clean this down in the comments section. Manifest this thing, make it happen. Uh, just like Captain Picard said, make it so, okay? <laughs> and um, yeah, remember, uh, I do appreciate you for leaving comments, saying hi, hello, interacting. Think of it like Facebook down there. We'll all interact. The Mod Squad stops by and say hi. You are open to do what you please down there, all right? And I do read, like, and love all the comments. I know it takes me a little Knight of Pentacles time. I keep busy, but I do love and pray for it, all right? Thank you very much, too, for taking time, Gemini, to let me read for your energies, your life, your love, and just making time for me. I truly love and appreciate you for that. And God, thank you very much as well, Spirit, for the messages we received for Gemini today. As always, we're truly grateful. So until next time, Gemini, don't forget to check out the most recent All Signs and enter into the contest. Four chances to win this coming Thursday during the collab with me and Sagittarius Oltero. We're going to have a good time. Hang out with me and the Mod Squad, all right? And um, yeah, just page of swords all over the place. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram. All the usuals. And remember, this will resonate to any and all placements of Gemini within your chart because we're not just our Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs, but all the parts of all our charts. And Michelle, Edex, Jojo, Cappy Goat, all y'all. Thank you guys for coming by. I love you guys. Totally. And till next time, I will see you then. Namaste. Peace and love. Archer out. Yeah, totally chariot. <laughs> I love you guys, Gemini. You're the best. Bye.